So just a heads up, this game is pretty complicated, and then Game Tutorial does a rather horrible job actually teaching you how to play. To be fair, I think the manual the game comes with explains certain topics a bit better, but I feel like most people no longer have that, or they just look things up online like I would. If you've been struggling, don't worry, everybody does it first. The barrier to entry here is pretty high, so I'm making this video as a way to make the game more accessible to people as it's honestly one of the best Sonic games. My footage is of the GameCube version, which to my knowledge performs better than all the other ones, so certain things may look different on your version. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that this game constantly propels you forward anytime you are on your gear. Gear are the various vehicles you ride within this game. The only thing you can do in terms of controlling forward momentum is going faster by dashing and stopping by holding the brake button. Anytime you are not on your gear, you are on foot. This happens at the start of every race and anytime you run out of air. When you're on foot, you have to hold forward to go forward and backward to go backward. As I said before, gear are the vehicles you ride during the game and air is essentially gasoline. You need air to power your gear, so making sure to get a steady stream of new air is important. Gear burns air while in normal use, and burns more while executing slides, dashes, and dropping tornadoes. The idea is to keep getting new air to prevent your air tank on the right side of the screen from depleting and forcing you on foot. Being on foot has a much lower speed cap than riding on gear, so you can't win races by solely being on foot. One of the main ways to get air is by performing tricks. But before you perform any tricks, you need to get yourself off the ground. Now you can jump with the A button, but it's important to note you can't perform tricks this way normally. There are basically three ways of performing tricks, the first two being while going off ramps. Ramps will get you into the air automatically, and if you don't do them the correct way, you will only be able to execute one trick, which is generally considered a failure. You want to avoid doing this. The way you're supposed to go off ramps is by holding the A button down as you approach them and releasing A as soon as you hit the edge or right before. This will propel you high into the air and allow you to get a variety of tricks as the trick animation gets sped up. The longer you're able to charge your jump, the higher you'll go and the more tricks you can do. Around every map you'll see different quarter pipes and ramps, and for all of these you have to hold down A and release near the top to do tricks. Quarter pipes you'll generally see off the side of tracks. Tricks are executed with the control stick. All you really have to do once in the air is tap a direction and your character will complete one trick. All eight directions on the GameCube control stick do different tricks, and it's important to get a feel for which directions do what, because if your trick animation isn't finished or near done when you hit the ground, all the tricks you've done will fail and you'll be rewarded a measly C rank and paltry 20 air. Trick ranks range from being C, being a failure, all the way to X being the best. The better your initial jump is, the faster you can perform tricks, and it's possible to interrupt some tricks with others. Although, from what I've seen, this is generally only possible when you've charged your jump all the way. The easiest strategy I have found for beginners is to hold the A button all the way down and get the best height off a ramp, then hit two or three directions while in the air, then release the control stick. This will allow you to usually finish your animations before you hit the ground and it gets you a good amount of air. Yes, that's not the perfect way to do it, but it's hard to describe and easier to get a good feeling for by doing this. If tricks are still giving you trouble, try and complete the hero's story mode to unlock mission mode. The first mission for each track in that mode is almost always a trick mission, which both allows you to get practice in and also make progress within the game. This mode in general is very good for mastering the game, and I recommend it if you feel rusty. And yes, those gold emblems are 100% achievable. I did it as a kid. The third way to do a trick is on turbulence. All players leave turbulence behind them when they dash. Turbulence is basically a small, translucent half pipe made of spent air you can ride inside. If you navigate up the sides where the red arrows are, you can do one trick with a very quick animation. Turbulence is really good for catching up to other racers when lagging behind and also for getting air back to perform your own dashes, thus creating your own turbulence behind you. But be fast because turbulence will not stay around forever and will slowly dissipate if you can't reach it in time. 
If you ever want to get off some turbulence, just press L and R at the same time to dismount. There's also three minor methods of getting air back that I'll go over very briefly. The first is item capsules. Item capsules are used instantly upon touching and come in two types, but I'll be talking about the first one here. Red capsules contain basic items like rings and air usually, but can also contain one of five Mario Kart style attack items. The second way to get air back is during automatic trails. Every track has one of these and you'll know it when you see it because your character will do something automatically and out of your direct control. What you are supposed to do during automatic trails is rotate the control stick to get more from this segment. Think that one mini game in the original Mario Party that caused so much controversy. Automatic trails will always replenish air, but some prioritize going faster in the segment over receiving air and vice versa. Basically. If you rotate the control stick during an automatic trail, you'll be doing what you're supposed to be doing for that track, no matter what. The last minor method of receiving air is likely the most important and gratifying. As you collect the rings scattered around the track and in item capsules, you'll get a level up. Leveling up does a few things, such as improving your overall stats like top speed, but also gives you a higher air cap on your air tank and completely refills all your air. Level ups will occur at 30 and 60 rings. Leveling up will also change some characters' attack animations, but this isn't always true. For example, Sonic at level 1 dashes forward on his board, like normal, but at level 2 and 3 will curl up into a ball and do his signature spin dash. Now, let's expand on rings very briefly. Whenever you fall down a pit or receive damage from being attacked by another player, you'll lose all your rings and your level ups. You will not lose rings from hitting walls and obstacles. Losing level ups can really suck, even for experienced players, so try your best to avoid letting this happen. I think the bomb item capsule also causes ring loss to those it hits, but I am not 100% sure. As one final note, if you're ever out of air and on foot, and you can't go off a nearby jump or enter an automatic trail, find an air pit. These look like little octagon shaped cylinders standing upright on the track that say air pit on them. These will somewhat fastly fill up your air tank to the max and are the best way to refill your air in general when you are in danger of going on foot. Even I use them sometimes. You can use them when grinding your gear, but do so at your own risk because you come to a complete stop while in them. When your air is full, you'll be fired out of the pit on your gear. Alright, that's a wrap on air and tricks. Now let's talk about what you can do with air. As I stated before, your gear spends air anytime you are on it, but you'll expend more air when executing certain actions. These actions are dash, slide, and tornado drop. Dash is straightforward. You press the X or B button to dash, consuming a lot of air, about one fourth of your tank at level one, and propelling yourself forward with a boost of speed. You'll never see it on screen, but you'll actually leave a trail of turbulence behind you as you dash. Dashing is also the only way for you to enter attack mode manually, and attack mode ends when your dash stops. Attack mode lets you damage other players, which in turn allows you to knock their ring counter down to zero and stops them in their tracks. Keep in mind, this can happen to you too, so be careful. The slide is rather simple as well. When holding left or right on the control stick, hold down either L or R to start sliding. And from there, hold left or right on the control stick to sharpen or widen your turn once the slide is started. While you are in a slide, you will steadily consume more air than normal. When you've made your return, release L or R to get a small boost, but you have to be turning for a certain amount of time before you can boost out of a slide. Oh, and if you start holding L or R while you aren't holding left or right, you'll break instead. Don't do that. 
it. So, how do you prevent yourself from being attacked by other players dashing up behind you? If you look at the bottom middle of your screen, you'll see a thing I call the rear view mirror. This thing basically shows you where characters are behind you relative to your position. Characters outlined in red are what you need to worry about. If you see that, you're supposed to hold both L and R at the same time to drop a tornado that will trap your foe, cancel their dash, and make them behave as if they hit an obstacle. Here's the thing though, dropping tornadoes uses quite a bit of air and also kills your own speed. I have literally never found this technique useful, and I don't recommend using one unless you can drop one and then dash immediately afterwards. Once you get good at this game, you're usually miles ahead of other racers anyways, which leaves tornado drop completely worthless. I've actually been able to lap around back to the person in 8th place before. I get the feeling it gets used more in the multiplayer mode since other real players have the potential to keep up with you better. On a side note, this technique was also dropped in Zero Gravity, and since it's not useful here, I don't consider it all that worth learning. One of the most important parts of this game is your character's skill class. Each playable character falls into one of three skill classes, speed, fly, and power. If you've played Sonic Heroes or Sonic Advance 3, you'll be a bit familiar with these classifications. You'll sometimes see a skill section marked on the track with signs for the corresponding skill type, but you can use them in non-marked places too as long as you have the means to do so. Speed type characters can grind on rails, which you do by pressing A to jump into the air and then press A again while in the air and jumping to connect with a rail when you're nearby it. Grind rails are yellow and have a blue glow at the beginning and a red glow at the end. Rails generally take you through a section of track faster than you could normally and replenish air while grinding. Fly type characters are able to launch off runways into the air and fly through accelerators for a boost of speed and air replenishment. Accelerators are the rings you see floating in the air, generally following a flight type air ramp. While in the air, you'll need to use the control stick to aim yourself into each accelerator. You cannot use runways when out of air. Power type characters are very straightforward and the characters I recommend for beginning players. Technically, they can use their skill any time and are the most versatile. However, they won't be getting back a lot of air when using their skills outside of the marked power type areas. Power type characters are able to knock away obstacles on the track, being cars, robots, barrels, crystals, etc. Because all other characters will slow down when running into these obstacles, power type characters make navigating the track much easier. You'll get more air back if you can chain together knocking away obstacles. Knocking away just one won't earn you much. Power type characters are the only skill type that can be used when out of air. Finally, there's a character's stats. Stats are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't touch on them much. Dash is how fast your boost is. Limit is your top speed. Power is how much different terrain affects you. Cornering is your ability to make turns and I believe perform air slides, but I'm unsure. Using different gears besides your character's basic equipment can also affect your overall stats. That's all the basics. If you find anything confusing, it's a good idea to experiment yourself. You will get a feel for it eventually, even if it seems intimidating at first. Once you've mastered all that, you can move on to these advanced techniques. If you're able to jump off a ramp correctly and get the maximum amount of air, you can actually do two different types of jumps that will allow you to reach different parts of the track. Holding back on the control stick allows you to do a high jump, and holding forward allows you to do a long jump. It's up to you to figure out which jump is required to get to certain shortcuts, but generally if a jump is small, you need a high jump, and if a jump is pretty wide, you need a long jump. The easiest way to do these is while you are charging your jump leading up to the ramp to also hold back or forward depending upon which jump you need to make. But all you really have to do is be pressing it when you release the A button. Gold item capsules come in two types, 100 ring and max air. Every course in the game has a 100 ring capsule hidden somewhere on the course, and only some courses contain the max air capsule. Keep in mind, the 100 ring capsule will get you to level 3 instantly upon grabbing. It's a bit of a risk if you want to go for it at the start of a race. Gold capsules don't respawn like normal item capsules. And if you grab the 100 ring capsule and then get attacked, you'll lose all of them. So plan carefully. There's three gear types. Boards, skates, and bikes. And not every character can ride all of them. You have boards at the start. You'll get access to skate gears in the shop when you unlock Shadow. Shadow's basic equipment, Darkness, can be used by all characters that can ride skates. 
You'll also get access to bike gears in the shop when you unlock Eggman. Eggman's basic equipment is E-Rider, and it can be used by all characters that can ride bikes, just like Shadow Skates. There isn't much of a difference between the classes outside of how much air each burns while in use. Skates use the least, boards use average, and bikes use the most. The trade-off for this is skates have slightly below average stats, and bikes have above average. I personally stick to each character's basic equipment, but more on that in a little bit. So at the beginning of each race you'll notice there's this electric barrier that runs above the starting line along with a timer that counts down from 5 to 0. On 0, the electric barrier will disappear, and if you happen to touch the electric barrier, you'll be given a bad rating and frozen in place, shocked, and be at a serious disadvantage. The idea is to cross the starting line right as that barrier disappears. Now that might sound crazy hard, but there's a trick to doing that I'm going to teach you. At the very beginning of every race, you'll see the track name and some establishing shots, followed by a one-liner from your character. Hold down on the control stick this whole time, and as soon as you're given control, you'll begin to walk backward. Keep holding down until you hear the third chime on the countdown timer. After the third chime, when the time says 2.4 to 2.3, push forward. You should cross the starting line right after the barrier is taken down. Keep in mind, I am purposely giving you a timing that is not the exact time but this is a good way to learn how to cross the starting line. And the best part is, it's the same for every single track. All right, these last two are pretty situational. On some tracks, if you do a trick while riding turbulence, you'll smash through the track ceiling and end up on another portion of the track. You'll likely find this out while playing through the Babylon Rogue story mode. The other one is Sign Grind, which is jumping at certain electronic signs with arrows. When you do this, you'll ride along the sign. This is notable on one specific track that has two sharp 90 degree turns, one after another. All right, you've made it to the end. Here's my final piece of advice. This game has a lot of different gears you can unlock or buy in the shop that seem to have amazing stats or abilities but I want to say this again. I personally don't find any gears to be all that worthwhile compared to your basic equipment. You're free to experiment, however. Just understand, all gears will have drawbacks. Alright, now let's put it all together.